Good day guys, my name is Yanulwa. Presently, the area of Akas is organizing the Learn with PA program for the OAP Stop 10 training, which is hosted on Triacme. It's a training that is to last for 10 days, and in each day, you have to learn a new vulnerability type in the OAP Stop 10. And this started on July 13th. So, we have decided to do a walkthrough for each day. So for everything we learn in a day, we are going to have a walkthrough for it. Today we'll be looking at the one which is injection. So before we start, we need to make sure we are connected to the VPN. So to do that, let me try to increase my terminal. Then navigate to where your file is downloaded. Then you can connect it using OpenVPN. So once you see this message, we know we are connected to the network. So we can head over to the page, click on Tax 4, which is the one injection, and read through the guideline provided. Injection flaws are very common, are very common in applications today. So after reading through it and you understand it, you can read the OS command injection, then move over to the practical. So for the practical aspect, we are going to deploy a machine. So we click and give it some time. Give the machine some time to come up. So while that is coming up, we'll read what check out what we have. We are giving an explanation of what we are expected to do blank command injection occurs when the system command the server does not return response. So basically, what OS command injection is is when a web server is or a server is taking commands inputs from the user and is processing it directly without sanitization. So injection is when the system takes code from the user. Without sanitization, that means it automatically process the code without checking whatever the user has imputed. So we have provided some of the commands we can use for Linux. We can use who am I, ID, IP, IF config, you name. Then to complete the questions below, we have to navigate to this URL. So I'll just click on that. And we have provided with this page an evil shell. Uh, text button the text box that says enter command and a submit button so let's just see if we can actually run basically next show we run who am i we're supposed to show our current user and you can see that we have www data returned that means we are able to run commands so to answer the first question is this what strange file text file is in the website food directory so since we have to provide the text files in the website with directory, we'll start by listing all the files in this directory so we can do ls and this shows us all the files in this directory. We already know evil.php because that's the page we are on. We know index.ph because it's a landing page, but we have this file named drpepe.txt which is odd. So that answers the first question. That's the file that is strange in the website with directory. Then the next question is how many non roots, non service, non daemon users are there? To do that, we are going to list all the users and you can find them at the it is a password. So doing this we know we can say we have the root user, but the question said non roots. So that means we won't count that then all other users here are just services or demon users so we don't have any real user that means we don't have since how many non root users had it that means we have zero we only have the root user services and demon users moving to the question what user is the app running as as we saw earlier, to check who we are running as, you have to do who am I and choose us. We are running as www data. 
the next one is what is the user shell set as you can also do that by checking the etc password file and checking for the comment user which is www data you can see that the shell of this user is set to user has been no login and that is the answer to that question next question is what version of ubuntu is running uh, what we we'll do here is basically go go around to see so we can say let's check ubuntu version check you can do that just click around and you can learn how to check our ubuntu version so you can see this command lsb underscore release dash a will show us our ubuntu version we'll just copy that then we run it on this web server and you can see that it returns ubuntu description ubuntu 18.04.4 now our ubuntu version is 18.04.4 which is the answer to that question then the last question says put out the MOTD what favorite beverage is shown now the first thing is we have to understand what MOTD is so we are just going to search for MOTD Linux so this shows us the meaning of MOTD it says the UTC MOTD is a file that contains a message of the day so MOTD means message of the day and you get this most times when you connect to a system, especially by SSH. So let's say you connect to a system by SSH, you are going to see the message of the day displayed to you. Some basic configuration about the system, like the uptime, the CPU usage, and stuff. So the question says we should print out the MOTD. So we have to know the location of MOTD first. So I will say MOTD Linux and find the location. You can click on the first link that says where is MOTD on modern Ubuntu systems. Looking at this answer, scrolling down, yeah, you can see ls etc update MOTD.d. That means you can confirm this by saying ls etc update MOTD.d. Doing this, we can see a file. 00 header 10 dot upload.txt we can go through everything they are all files so we'll start with the first one we'll start by listing this one and this shows us the message of the day we asked what favorite beverage is shown so reading through this looking towards the end you can see dr pepper makes the world taste better so the question asks us which beverage so the beverage is dr pepper and that is the answer to the last question as you can see here so finally what we want to talk about before and this is the application of this vulnerability in the real world now it's very common to see developers to take inputs from users like creating forms maybe for login for registration for other purposes, this problem arises when developers take input from users without sanitizing it. And they just take the command from the user, then process it on the backend server without checking whatever the user has imputed. This can be a great problem because the user can literally run anything. The developer might expect the app to be used by normal people, normal users that just go about the activities and close the website but well, these same sites can also be used by attackers or hackers now if the developer fails to sanitize whatever is being imputed and they run it directly on the server it can impact them greatly because the attacker can basically control whatever they want on the web server so what the vulnerability is teaching us is that whenever you have whenever you are working as a developer or whatever and you take input from the user make sure you sanitize your inputs you check properly that you are getting what you're expecting to get that will be all we can move on to the next one